This lesson is 9-2. This is graphs of polar coordinates. So we sort of touched on this last time, but we're going to continue it and take it a little further. So when we first learned how to graph functions on a Cartesian plane, we learned how to graph points. We plotted those points. So for example, if I gave you the equation y equals 2x plus 1. At this point now we know, you know, the slope is 2 and the y-intercept is 1. But when we first started, we would just plug in an input for our x and we would see what we got out for our output for y. So for example, if we plug in 0, we get 1. If we plug in 1, we get 3. If we plug in 2, we get 5. And we can plot those points. So going, this is my x and this is my y, we would go 0 over on our x and we would go 1 up on our y and put a point there. Then 1 over on our x and 3 up on our y, then 2 over and up 5. And we get this line like this. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So just by graphing a couple points, we can come up with the shape of that graph. Now obviously if this was just a line, if it was something that was quadratic, we would assume it was going to create a parabola and etc. So graphing polar equations on a polar coordinate system, instead of x and y as our input and output, in polar we have our input is theta and our output is r. We're usually in the form r of theta instead of f of x. So for example, we have this equation here, r equals cosine theta. So the first thing we're going to do is look at some of these points. So for example, when we plug in 0, let's think about our unit circle, which I have to the right. We plug in 0, what value do I get for x? Well, we can look right here, and we see that my value that I get for x is 1. So when we plug in 0 in our theta, our r in this function equals 1. When we plug in pi over 2, we are at this 90 degrees spot. We get 0. Oops, sorry. Come on. We get 0. At pi, we get a negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, we get 0. And then back up at 2 pi, we get a positive 1. So we can graph that on here. We can label our theta. So we're going to have, I'm going to call this uh, 1 for our r. We'll be at 1 right here. This can be 1 half. This would be 3 halves, etc. So when we are at 0, we get a value of 1. When we are at pi over 2, we get a value of 0. Then at pi, we would go out to here to pi and we would get a value of negative 1. So we're back at this spot. So we really just have these two points. That doesn't really tell us enough. I think we need to pick different intervals. So let's look and see what happens when we plug in something like um, pi over 6. So for pi over 6, we get this rad 3 over 2. So we'll say this is my pi over 6 line right here. And we get something that's rad 3 over 2. Well, that value is a little more than 1 half. It's, it's over here somewhere. Then if we plug in something that's uh, pi over 3, for example, we would actually get 1 half. So here at pi over 3, we actually land on this 1 half thing. What you'll see is going to happen is now we actually get a circle, something like this. This is r equals cosine theta. That causes us to have a circle, um, and it is reflected about this theta. So around theta, we have that circle. What if we looked at 2 cosine theta? Well, the difference between having a 2 cosine theta versus 1 times cosine theta is that we're going to go all the way out to 2. So instead of having 1 half, we were going to have 1 here. And down here, we would have the same thing. And so now our 2 cosine theta actually is a bigger circle, a circle that has a diameter of 2 now. Sorry, that circle wasn't quite <laughs> the nicest circle. Let's look at sine theta. So I broke this up into more pieces so we could see it more clearly. So let's fill in our theta and look at what we get for r. So um, plug in 0 for theta, we get r equals 0 based on our unit circle over here. If we plugged in something like pi over 6, we get 1 half. If we plug in pi over 4, we get rad 2 over 2. Pi over 3, we get rad 3 over 2. Pi over 2, we get 1. 2 pi over 3, we are at positive rad 3 over 2 still. Then positive rad 2 over 2. Then positive rad 1 over 2, which is just 1 half. And 
pi, which is up 0 again. And it's going to become negative. All those values will also become negative. So if we look at what happens there, plug in 0, we get 0. If we plug in pi over 6, I'm going to also make this 1 half and 1. So it's easier to see some of the stuff that's happening. Plug in pi over 6. That happens here. I'm going to make some of these lines in between. Then we get 1 half. If we plug in pi over 4, we're at rad 2 over 2, so maybe somewhere like here. Uh, rad 3 over 2 for pi over 3, so something like this. And then a positive 1. When we plug in pi over 3, we again have these values. these values that are a little closer and a little bit farther in like this. And now what we have is a circle that is reflected around theta equals pi over 2. So that's a reflection for our r sine theta. We have theta equals pi over 2 as our reflection line. And again, we have a circle. So we had a circle that was reflected over our theta and a circle now that's reflected over theta equals pi over 2. So you'll notice that for any number that we put inside of just a cosine theta or an r sine theta, r equals sine theta, we're going to get a circle. So circles happen for a cosine theta or a sine theta. That's where we get those circles. We also have a circle, as we saw, at r equals a, or r equals some number, like r equals 2 causes a circle. Let's look and see what happens when we get 3 times sine of 2 theta. So I've gone ahead and filled in this table of values, which you should do on your own. Make sure you're coming up with the right values. What we're doing is just saying 3 times sine of 2 theta. So if my theta is pi over 6, for example, actually what I'm typing in my calculator is 3 times sine of 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. Something to consider about this is that the period of this we would find by 2 pi over b, which means that our period is actually going to be 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. So everything's going to happen twice as fast. That's one way to think about this. So we have 2 times our theta for every theta that we have that we're putting in. So this is our table. Now we're just going to graph these points. So for 0, I plot 0. Let's do red. 0, I plot 0. At pi over 6, I'm plotting about 2.6. And I filled in some of my other lines, my pi over 6 and my pi over 3 line. For pi over 4, we're plotting 3. For pi over 3, we get 2.6. And then for pi over 2, we get a 0 again. What's happened is we've sort of got a pedal here. So we can think about that, that we have that pedal. Now if we kept going, we're going to have um, 2 pi over 3, we get negative 2 pi over 6. So, or I'm sorry, 2 pi over 3, we get negative 2.6. So this would be our pi over 3. We would have a 2.6, and then we would have to do the negative version of that. So really, we're somewhere over here. Oops, sorry. Over here. Then for plugging in 3 pi over 4, we get a negative 3, so we're out here. Oops, sorry. So we get these spots over here. And what you'll notice is we have another petal. We have a petal. Let's do it in red again. That's in this quadrant now. Okay, And actually, we can keep going, and we're going to have those same petals. Our vertex is going to be on 3 for every pi over 2. We're going to have a petal here and a petal here. These are called a rose. When you have something that's some a times sine b theta or some a times sine b theta, cosine th b theta, you're going to end up with a rose. So again, those equations are a cosine n theta or r equals a sine and theta. So here's some additional notes for all the different sorts of shapes that we can have. We've talked about a circle, which it has these typical equations, and we talked about a rose, which has these typical equations. Something you'll notice about a rose, which I, I encourage you to play on Desmos about, if the length of the petal is always a. We talked about that. We saw that it went out to a positive 3. Now, if your um, n inside of here is odd, then you have n petals. So if we had something like um, r equals 3 sine of 5 theta, we would expect to end up with 5 petals. That's how that works. Now if that n right here is odd, or is even, excuse me, we have r 3 sine of 6 theta, 
we actually end up with two n petals. So this one, we would have 12 petals on our rows, and this one we would have five petals. That works for any n as long as we're talking about even or odd. Okay, we have some other shapes here. We have a cardioid, we have a limison, and we have spirals. Uh, these are all the different shapes that you can expect, and they give you all of the basic equations to go along with them. Um, we'll talk more about these next time, but here are all the different sorts of equations. This will be in your notes that you've downloaded on Blackboard.